Hey y'all, it is Glam Game Rebecca, and in today's video we are playing StarCraft 2 again. This is the campaign called Zill, or The Dig, depending on which way you look at it. Every one of these that I'm doing is going to be on normal mode, so just in case you are ever confused as to what version, whether it is easy, normal, um, you know, hard or brutal that I'm playing, I play all of these on normal for many reasons, but I want people to be able to play these along with me or to find strategies that work for them playing in easier mode so that it makes a little bit more sense when they try and play the harder ones. So that is why you will always find that I will play this on normal mode whenever I'm recording these for YouTube, just so I can show everybody how to do it. Um, I don't do like easy, easy because then, you know, I think everybody would be able to figure out how to play it for normal. Anyways, so this is Zill. This was number nine on my list. Somehow or another, my footage um, got rearranged. And so I am trying to play catch up. Um, I've had a migraine for like three weeks, and so I have not done a whole lot of editing because I couldn't do the voiceovers, so there's also that. Anyways, I'm getting caught up now. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy these. These are still going to be coming out on Saturdays at 11.30 or noon, something like that is when I was setting them up to go up. So check them out every weekend. I have four more to get edited that I have filmed already to go. Um, I've, got a, I've got a list so far of 15. Um, I finished one last night, so I'm a little bit caught up, but not by much. Anyways, hopefully you guys are enjoying these. Leave your thoughts down below. This is a long one. I've sped all of the non-talking parts up times four. Nice work, sir. The payoff from Redstone really got us back on our feet. Why is that Tosh guy bored? He wanted to talk to you in person, sir. Something about conducting more business ventures together. You do any digging on him? Of course. And he's no pirate. Rumor has it he's a renegade ghost. And until he vanished, he was one of the Dominion's top assassins. Now Manx hates him almost as much as he hates you. Well, I like this guy already. Just the same. We'd best keep an eye on him. Yes, sir. You ever heard of a guy named Gabriel Tosh? Only rumors. Way I hear it. He was mixed up in some covert branch of the ghost program that produced some real scary badasses. Word was, Tosh snapped and went rogue. I'd play it real cool with that kind. He'd cut your throat soon as look at you. I've dealt with rogue ghosts before. It's the one still working for Manx I got a problem with. Donny Vermillion UNN, your first, last, and only stop for the truth. Tonight, our own Kate Lockwell uncovers a secret shadow war waged by our brave Dominion ghosts against a ruthless hidden enemy. Thanks, Donny. I'm talking live with a specialist in the Dominion. I understand that you and your comrades have been against a group of. What can you tell us about that? Well, Kate, I'm not allowed to say much. But I can tell you that his allies will not. We expect them very soon. I think we'll all sleep a little better tonight, knowing our Dominion forces are watching over us. For UNN, I'm Donnie Vermillion. You came to the right place.
Just out of curiosity, I did some tests on the minerals from Redstone. I thought you should know I found trace quantities of Jorium, a rare crystal with very unique properties. I'm all ears, Doc. What kind of properties? Jorium resonates at the same frequency as certain brain waves. It's been theorized that it could be used to stimulate brain activity or even produce psionic abilities in human subjects. What the hell does Tosh want that for? User identified. Rainer James. Ah, he is the man. We make a good team, me and you. Why are you here, Tosh? Our business is done unless you got something else for me. Yeah, I got another job for us. On a world called Belshia. Interested? Maybe. But what's in it for me? Piracy ain't exactly my chosen path. Everyone knows Jim Rayner wants to put the hurt on Mengsk. I can help you with that. I can help you big time. I'll think about it. For the time being, welcome aboard the Hyperion. We'll talk later. My people established a new colony on Haven. It was going well, but now the colony's gone dark. They're not responding on any frequency. We need to get there. Mobius wants us to go after another artifact on some dead world called Zill. Apparently, they sent in a specialist team, but they lost contact with them two days ago. Their bad luck, I guess. Figure we'll get hazard pay for this one. So here's the deal. This place is a morgue. Whatever used to live in these ruins up and died millions of years ago. Before they went missing, the Mobius team reported artifact radiation emanating from that big old hunk of rock over yonder. They brought a big damn laser drill to burn the way in. Laser drill? That thing's a monster. If the Mobius team had access to that kind of hardware, I need to think about what could have wiped them out. Reckon we'll find out soon enough, partner. Alright, we are loading into this map now. So the first things I want to say is make sure that you move all of your troops as a unit on this map. Um, for the very beginning of it. And then as soon as you get into the actual base part of it, you're going to want to pump out as many... Um, marines as possible you want to do a four to one ratio for a healer just so that you have enough troops and the faster you take the th watch your corners boys we don't know who cleaned this place out read protoss spaces the less shit you're gonna have running at you this entire time more terran thieves the mysteries of this place are forbidden you will pay for your transgressions with your lives. Okay. At least we know what happened to the other expedition. So, if you look, there are several troops here. You want to move everything as a unit. Um Hold up there. Those Protoss cannons will tear us a new one if we try to advance. Swan, you promised me siege tanks. Where are they? Settle down, hotshot. They're coming. These babies will knock those cannons down from a nice, safe distance. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about uh, everything getting, like, killed off. And then um, when you get your get into your base, you want siege tanks, at least three on um, every side. You want two on the sides of the drills, and you want two on each entrances. And then if you want to expand out... These new siege tanks work just like the old ones. When you put them in siege mode, they get increased range and firepower. They can't move in siege mode, so if you need to reposition them, just switch them back into tank mode. You got it? 
Need something. Oh. Um, there is a second base to the right hand side. You, you will walk past it here in just a second. Um, but if you put siege. Let's get some siege tanks deployed on the high ground. They can pound that Protoss stalker before it even gets close to us. Siege tanks between that and the other base. You'll be able to expand a little bit faster. I don't normally expand out that far fast enough because I worry about getting attacked. But. Mobius Base Local Net Accessed. Decrypting security overrides. Transferring control of base structures to you, Commander. Fired up. 174 gigawatts. The power of the sun at your fingertips. Now get it aimed at that door and let's get cutting. Laser output is good. Drilling will take some time, but there's no other way into the temple. Sir, the Taldarim are mobilizing their forces against us. So we set a perimeter and protect the drill until we're through. I'm just glad we've got siege tanks. If you want to stop playing it safe like me, just go ahead and put your siege tanks across that little gap. We need bunkers and siege tanks defending that laser drill. We got no chance of claiming the artifact without it. And then build out your second base so that you have stuff going on on both bases. More more crystals coming in, more buildability, uh, buildability and um, it will help you in the long Sir, I've managed to access what's left of the Mobius Expedition sensor net. I'll route it through your map so you can see what the Taldarim are up to. Ready. Long run. Also, taking that first base on the right-hand side is going to be easier to prevent that second base from getting attacked as much. So you want to go after that one first. Um, it'll be safer for your troops if you do, you know, use that second base. Um, more than I do. And if you want to see me play through this again and build out that second base, just to show you a comparison of what it would look like and how much faster it will take, I can do that as well. Okay, so once you get that second base built up, I want you guys to go after that first base on the right hand side. Of course, I didn't do that because, you know, I didn't think about it at the time because I was too busy in build mode. And, um, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention was put bunkers. Um, bunkers at the top of the ramp, two of them, as well as aerial units to like knock those down because they will send those at you so, uh, soon too. The other thing is you have to watch out. The Colossi are able to walk over cliffs and stuff. So, you're going to want bunkers on the right-hand side of your base where the second base is. You're going to want at least two there as well as... You would desecrate that which belongs to the gods. This will not be borne by the faithful. Sir, those are Protoss Archons. If they get too close, our men won't stand a chance. I'm giving you manual control of the laser drill. See if you can use it against the Protoss. Ready to raise some All right. You heard the man. Swing that laser around. We can use it to drive back the Protoss. Plus two aerial takedown units. And then um, over near the other base, you're also going to want a sensor tower and at least two more barracks. Um, and make sure that you upgrade the barracks ability so that it actually can like attack things because of the fact that um, if you don't, then what will happen is it will just kind of sit there unless you have people in it. And you don't want to have a ton of Marines sitting in barracks to shoot at people. You want the barracks to also shoot at people without. Upgrade complete. The laser drill has breached the door's outer layer. Required. I can't build here. Marines in them. Um, kind of a double whammy there. Also, shooting at the first Taldarim Guardian um, is a little bit easier Alert. Enemy air units on approach vector. Damn it. Air units, nothing. Those are transports. Use the laser to knock them down fast. But trying to select the second one is always kind of a pain in the butt. So once you get the second base built out and you take over that right hand base um, of the Talarim, you want to then focus on the left hand base at the very bottom. And then there's one other base. 
Officer, I'm picking up the energy signatures of several Protoss relics in the area. I'm marking them on your map. Well, if there's time, we can blast them free with a laser drill. I bet Stedman would love to study them. Base up by the temple that you need to worry about taking out. So once you get all of that done, then you can build and build and build. You need troops that can take heavy fire because they're going to keep sending those guardians at you. They're going to keep sending Colossi at you. And the further you get closer to taking down the Zanaga temple's door, then um, the more stuff they're going to throw at you. So um, trying to attack those bases early is key. Building marine barracks and getting those upgraded so that they have the turret on top um, is probably going to be one of your first priorities because of the fact that it allows you the ability to have them manned without actual marines in them so that your marines can be doing something else. So rule of thumb is I would say um, four siege tanks on the left, two on the right hand side by the actual drill, and then... The laser drill is now cutting through the door's thermal barrier. Got no and three more in that gap between base one and base two. And what I'll probably do as soon as I get done um, doing the voiceover for this one, I might as well just load the game and go ahead and record that now so that I can remember what I was talking about and just play it. And Sir, more air units inbound. We got to take them out or they'll keep dropping troops right on top of us. Show you what it's like to have the two bases back to back. Um, so that way I won't have to just keep explaining stuff. Um, also covering that little valley area in between the two bases with siege tanks allows you for greater capabilities of defending that second base. And you also want to put another siege tank on the far right hand side of that second base in order to make sure that it is also protected. Because like I said, the Colossi will walk over the damn mountain to attack your people. So you want at least two um, SCBs building at all times. You want to keep one on the left side building, one on the right side building. That way, just in case something needs to be repaired, it can go and run and, and do and whatever. Um, and making sure that you've got the ability to, to build more troops. And I think at this point, um, I, I could barely build like 100 uh, troops because I did not have the capacity to build them so also keep in mind that you need storage those uh storage bunkers so that you can build more troops all right so these Taldarim guardians they're coming a little bit uh, more often and then the closer we get to like the quarter way point the um colossi and stuff will start coming around and being more and more of a pain in the butt now just to give you guys a heads up there is going to be uh, a lot of cutscenes after this episode Thermal barrier breached. The laser drill is now cutting through the core. They seek to be found the legacy of the gods. Destroy them. There were several cutscenes that I wanted to make sure were included in this video so that y'all could enjoy them. Um, because somehow or another I recorded out of order or had to go back and re-record something because for whatever reason it only recorded like part of the episode, I wanted to make sure that we... Um, you know, we went back and played some of the cutscenes so that you guys could see them. Because sometimes the cutscenes, the cinematics and stuff, they tell more of the story than just the map. And to understand some of these maps a little bit better, you kind of have to watch the cutscenes in order to get a better understanding of, of what certain things are and what they're doing and why they're relevant. So um, there's also that. But anyways, by this point in the game, hopefully you have both bases up and running, you've got things protected, and you've taken out two of the main Protoss bases um, that are plaguing you, and hopefully you are that far along. If not, then um, you can stay in that little base all up there on your little little platform all by, by your lonesome and kind of just protect that. But you're going to run out of crystals um, like I did, uh, depending on how you build and where you build and all that kind of lovely fun stuff. So 
Um, I think the main thing is is to get that gap covered in between the two bases first and build out that second base as fast as possible and then go about, you know, trying to do all the other stuff because that will help you in the long run. Anyways, so I'm going to be um, wrapping this up shortly. If you guys like these videos, please leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts about these, um, you know, these episodes and whatnot because they do take a lot of editing time, not to mention the voiceovers and stuff that I do. Oh, and one of the songs that I use, because I use Wondershare Filmora to edit these, um, one of the songs that I used in one of the other episodes, they copyright claimed my video. This channel doesn't earn any money. It gets zero earnings at all, period. So um, I did, you know, I pay for the subscription for Wondershare. I don't know why they claimed it the way that they did, but they're trying to like screw me up. Sure thing. Breach of the doorway core is imminent. Structured access imminent. It is our sacred duty to stop these defilers. Burn them to ashes. And even though what I used was there for me to use and I had rights and permissions to use it and I even noted the song in the description box, they still claimed the video and denied my appeal on that. So whatever. Um, when this channel finally becomes monetized, I will just mute out the song because I don't want to pay them a fucking dime because they were dicks about it. You have prevailed for now. Word of this sacrilege will echo across the stars, James Raynor. The day of reckoning draws near. These artifacts of yours seem real popular, Tychus. What do we care? As long as the pay's good. Really? I'd say getting vaporized by the Tal Dream definitely counts as diminishing returns. So here we are at the end of this episode. The last little bit of this is just going to be cutscenes. I'm not going to be talking through any of the rest of this. So if you want to stay past this point, you're welcome to. This is 32 minutes long. Um, you are at the 22 minute long point. So hopefully you guys are enjoying these. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. And as always, um, if you're not a subscriber, please click the subscribe button, toss a like on this video and share it with your friends if they are having a hard time with these campaigns. I will re-record this and play it the other way. You show up out of nowhere. Time is oh. short. You must understand. The answers you seek lie within. Study it well. The fate of creation hangs in the balance. Nice to see you too. Ehan crystals before. Supposedly they allow you to relive another person's memories. But if Rosera tools uncovered, he was desperate for me to see it too. Well, here goes nothing.
I see we have a new acquisition. Is it a Protoss device? That's right. But I wouldn't mess with it if I were you. It's a Kaderan Ehan crystal. It's a memory storage device. It lets you experience what other people have seen or done. It can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Yet you don't fear it at all. You're a fascinating man, Jim Rayner. You know more about the Protoss and the Zerg than any of the experts I've read about. artifacts is making me nervous. Can you tell me any more about them? It's interesting. The one from Zill is different than the others. However, I think all of them once constituted a single device. You mean they make something bigger? It would seem so. It's just a theory, but there's an attraction between the artifacts we've collected. A kind of harmonic resonance. Given the points of contiguous translinear alignment, I think they'd be drawn together like magnets under the right field adjustment. Okay. Well, don't adjust anything just yet, Doc. I like them aligned just the way they are. Made some new contacts. Just check them out. Lots of folks ready to fight. For the right price. So now we've got three of these artifacts on my ship. When are we supposed to hand these damn things over? They got their hands full right now. The Zerg are about to invade Tirador, where Mobius' main research center is. I don't reckon we'll hear anything from them until they relocate somewhere safe. Wonderful. This is Donnie Vermillion, live from UNN. Tonight, the Zerg invasion, the battle so far. The Terran Dominion is holding firm under Zerg aggression. Our industrial complex has stepped up production on all fronts. Enlistment rates have risen within the penal system, and the Marine Corps is ready to get in the fight. The Zerg won't know what hit them. Donnie, has there been any word on when we start pushing the aliens back? Kate, if I revealed that, I'd be giving away vital Dominion secrets. You... think the Zerg watch our broadcast? I know they do, Kate. I know they do. Well, you heard it here first, folks. This is Kate Lockwell for UNN. We're 
rocking some serious heavy metal now that we got siege tanks. Yes, sir. The comforting thunder of the big guns. Well, comforting when they're on our side. Yeah, these newer tanks have better guns when they're on the move. And reinforced armor. So long as they still got the range in siege mode, the rest is just gravy. Between siege tanks and bunkers, we can hold the line against just about anything. You ain't gonna believe this, but I just saw Zeratul on the ship. Uh, how much did you have to drink tonight, sir? He was here, Matt. And he was hurt. On the run from something. Where is he now, sir? I don't know. But he ain't on the ship anymore. He gave me an Eon memory crystal, and he was desperate for me to study it. I guess he wants me to see what he's seen. 